waters of two oceans come together on the coasts of South Africa. The Atlantic brings cold, dark waters from the west, while the Indian Ocean brings all the warm turquoise of tropical Africa. In 1842, Captain Richard Burton wrote that on rounding the Cape of Good Hope, there appeared a wonderful spectacle as waves from the South Pole several miles long came and broke on the shore. The climatic mixture produced by the influence of both oceans makes up one of the most geographically diverse landscapes of the African continent, the strange mosaic of landscapes that conjures up images of different parts of the world. It is surprising that mountains with such dramatic escarpments as the Drakensberg Massif, which is vertical and brown, are surrounded by warm green pastures of alpine appearance, very near Mediterranean forests and subtropical jungles, in an amalgam of landscapes in which plant species exclusive to these parts thrive. All of this under the African sun. A plentiful supply of water combined with fresh pastures in a climate softened by the influence of the sea. A place where the first colonists felt homesick because it so closely resembled their native Europe. For this reason, South Africa has been called the greatest wildlife show on Earth. But we must go inland to find the Africa we all know. This is where our story begins, in the place where, for the first time, common sense seems to have won the day. The white rhinoceros has been on the verge of disappearing forever, and although it is still in danger, a door of hope has been opened in this corner of Africa. The Ulului Umfolosi National Park is in the Zululand region where the once powerful Zulu nation takes refuge today. These domes of ingenious interlocking architecture are reproductions of the old Zulu villages. This race of ferocious warriors originally from equatorial Africa emigrated south in the 16th and 17th centuries fighting with and conquering the tribes they met on their way before settling here. According to historians, the favorite son of some nomadic shepherds was called Zulu, which means sky. He settled here with his livestock and his family, so founding the nation that bears his name. The Zulu customs and beliefs are still very deep-rooted in the rural areas. This people with almost European features, tall in stature and large eyes, are organized in patriarchal clans that worship a single god called Nukulunkulu, who is the creator of everything. Each clan is made up of several families that live in a group of huts called a kraal, in the center of which they keep the animals. The kraal is considered to be a sacred place which women may only enter under certain circumstances. Traditional polygamy is decreasing little by little due to the influence of so-called civilization, but it still exists. A man with sufficient livestock must pay a dowry or lobola to his bride's family if he wishes to marry her. The amount depends on the social standing and education of the girl. Up to 20 head of livestock could be paid for the daughter of a chief, while four or five animals would be paid for the daughter of an average family. The Zulus were a warrior tribe whose valiant leaders were a threat to European colonizers for many years. 
The famous chief Shaka invented innovative military techniques such as this. The small Asegai and the shield made the Zulu invincible in one-to-one -one combat. In the 19th century, the closed lines tactic made the pretentious British army bite the dust, and they could not believe that they had been defeated by those savages. Today, young Zulus, proud of their history, have made these exercises which simulate the old combats into a sport. Their ancient military power is now celebrated in festivals with old war dances and battle songs. Since then, although a long time has passed, those Zulus that have not gone to the cities have conserved their Zululand kingdom and a great deal of their valiant pride. At present, there are six million Zulus, making them the largest group of black people in South Africa.